Greetings, and welcome to the Double Take demonstration of Double Take Availability Full Server Protection for Linux. In this short video, we're going to show you how easy it is to protect an entire Linux server from anywhere to anywhere utilizing Double Take Availability. So let's go ahead and get started. In my environment, I have two CentOS 7.0 servers, 7.0-1 and 7.0-2. One's my source, one's going to be my target. These machines can truly be anywhere. They could be physical, virtual, or cloud. They can be different hypervisors, different platforms, doesn't really matter to us. What I have is I just simply have the two operating systems available to me. I've installed double take availability for them both and I've put the license on them both as well. I have the double take console running anywhere in my environment. It could be a desktop, laptop, or a server, doesn't really matter to us. I've opened up that console and added the servers. In Double Take 8, to get started, what we do is we right click the server and say protect. We are immediately taken to the server workload job choice here, and the job we're doing today is full server. All the volumes on the right are selected. I just have root and boot, but if I had other data volumes, you'd see them, and I can deselect them if I wanted to. Also, under my replication rules, I can add any specific rules that I wanted to include or exclude any volumes, files, or even wildcards. Click next and you're taken to choose your target. The only target that I have in my environment is a 7.0-2 server, so I'm going to go ahead and choose that. If you didn't see your server, there was an option to find a new server down at the bottom, enter the IP address or name, along with a root username and password. Under my set options page, there's lots of options here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but what I would highly recommend is that you hit F1 at this point. This will bring up context sensitive help so you can know all the details about all the different job options and how they can help you with your protection. The first few I want to talk about are the ones that are already shown to me. The first one is failover identity. This basically is telling us do I want to fail over the IP address or do I want to keep the target IP address. Ideally in a environment where there's two machines in the same subnet, you're going to go ahead and apply the source network configuration. If the two machines are in different subnets, then retain the target network configuration. I'm going to go ahead and retain even though my environments are in the same subnet because I want to change DNS. The next section is reverse protection and routing. First it asks what IP address do I want to send the data to? That's the IP address of the target. And then this other option is reverse protection. Reverse protection really just makes it a little bit easier to get back to the original production machine with this double take availability full server protection. You specify a reserved IP address on the source and the target. What a reserved IP address is an IP address that doesn't fail over. It always stays with that original hardware. So if I was going to do that, I would select it here and then I'll go ahead and select that there and then I would say when you're reversing, send it to that dot 15 address. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to uncheck this. That way my protection is a little bit faster. And even if you do have this unchecked, what you can do after failover is you could simply create another full server protection job going backwards. Wait till that maintenance window and then go ahead and failover again, which is really what's happening with reverse protection. It's just done automatically. Failover monitors, a new section in Double Take 8 for Linux. We have a total time to failure by default, five minutes. It's going to ping the source server. If you don't allow ICMP pings, what you can do is you can change this to go to the replication service. Then it will monitor via the Double Take service. And if that timeout is exceeded, a failover condition will be met. If you want it to automatically fail over, you can go ahead and uncheck this option. When that failover condition is met, it will go ahead and automatically failover. But with this option checked, it will wait for user intervention. If you are going to use the automatic failover, I would highly recommend changing that failover monitor to something a lot higher to take into account any server restarts or intermittent network outages while the server may be still OK. You have the ability to run pre-failover and post-failover scripts. Pre-failover is a script that's ran on the target before reboot. Post failover is a script ran on the target after reboot and with a bash shell script you can truly do anything. Also in here we have snapshot protection now. Snapshots is for LVM volumes other than root and boot. I don't have any other volume so I can't set up snapshots on mine. Compression, I could set that up if I was going across a WAN and bandwidth controls. We even have the ability to set up encryption once we click next, we're taken to the job summary screen. The job summary screen is a pre-flight checklist just to make sure the source and target are compatible and can communicate before we do the protection. The only warning that I have here is that 
It also detected, as I mentioned earlier, that I don't have any snapshot capable volumes. I just have root and boot. I don't have any other volumes in my volume group, so I can't do snapshots. That's fine. I know this, so I'm going to simply click finish and create the job. The job is immediately created. Highlight the job here and it starts creating the connection from the source to the target. It creates the replication set, which is all the files and folders it's going to get, and it starts mirroring and replicating directly from the source into the target. It puts all the data into a particular folder called .dt staging on the target. That way when we do the failover it swaps the root for that .dt staging folder and that's why the failover is going to be very very fast. It mirrors and replicates at the same time. Mirroring is a process of comparing the source and target data. If there's anything different it will go ahead and send the changes. That process once done we have around 7% right now. Once that's done, it will go in a protecting state and I can fail over. Replication starts along with mirroring, but it's an ongoing process that never ends that captures the real-time byte level changes on the production system and sends them immediately over to the target. At any point, you could double-click a job, get detailed information about the job. You may even want to edit the job properties, maybe compression, bandwidth, snapshots. You can validate again to make sure the source and target are still compatible. And before we fail over, another statistic to look at in 8.0 is recovery point latency. This is a quick indication of how far behind the source and target are. If it's at zero, that means the source and target are in sync and you're not going to have any data loss. If this shows one minute, two minutes, ten minutes, then you're going to know when you fail over, you're going to lose that amount of data. That way you can make an informed decision on failover or know what to expect. Let's go ahead and allow this mirror to complete. It's just going to take a couple more minutes, but we're going to allow this mirror to complete. Once it's done, we're going to log into the target, into the source, install an application, modify some files, and we can see that go over when we fail over. All right, we're already in that protecting state, and I've SSH'd into the target, the 70-2. I want to show you the documents folder and that there's nothing in there. Also, if I try to run a command called IOTOP, we don't have that application installed. If I go to 70-1, let's go ahead and create some files in that documents folder. And now I have those files. Let's try to run that IOTOP application. It's not even on production. Let's go ahead and install it though. I just installed the application and now let's go ahead and run it. And now we have this application. All that was sent over in real time to the target environment. We can fail over at any time. Let's go ahead and do a failover. We look at my recovery point latency. It's at zero. Let's go ahead and click the failover button. We have two options, live and test. Live is going to shut down production machine if it's online. Normally, if it's a true failure, it's already offline. But test, what this does, it fails over the target machine and turns that into production. However, it leaves the production machine running so we don't impact the end users. I'll go ahead and fail over now. And this is the only time we really have downtime. During the entire installation of Double Take, the configuring of the job, the mirroring and the replication, we never had to take any users offline. This failover process is incredibly fast because what it's doing, it's swapping that hidden folder, that .dt staging folder, for the root volume and simply rebooting the target. The failover is already done and that target is rebooting. Once it comes up, it will be 7.0-1 and we're going to be able to SSH to it and see that application and data. I've gone over to my 70-2 SSH and if I try to connect to it it won't work if I try to restart the session because that machine is not there anymore. But if I SSH into my 70-1 and go ahead and try to restart the session it's going to go ahead and connect and I can now log in as root, check out that IO top application that's still there and see all my files and my failover is complete. Going back to the console, at this point, if I had reverse protection enabled, the target information was sent back to the source. I could power on the source, fix whatever was wrong with it, bring it back onto the network, and you would have a button right here to reverse, and it sends all the data from the target back to production. And then it's ready to fail over again, and that turns the production machine back into truly the production machine, and that's the process. I didn't have that set up, so what I would do is simply delete that job, and I can still set up my original production machine, give it a new name, for example, and then set up my job manually to go back and then fail over again during a maintenance window. At this point, however, all of our users are completely up and running in that target environment, in that target CentOS server, in just a few minutes with DoubleTake availability.
This brings us to the end of the Double Take demonstration of Double Take Availability Full Server Protection for Linux. To learn more and to stay informed, please give us a call at the number on your screen or visit us at doubletake.com. I'd like to thank you for your time and have a great day.